Hello my brothers and sisters of the order, I am Celtic Templar and welcome back to another Fantasy Friday video. And for this type of video I wanted to actually continue with the Legend of Korra or the Avatar group, uh, which if none of y'all have actually seen the Air Nomads or the Earthbenders, I will leave a link down below for y'all. And of which, this one I actually do want to talk about because I have no problem with this one, which uh, that's surprising because in truth, the waterbenders, as we know, uh, live near water. They live in the North and South Pole, and we even got the swamp benders in the Earth Kingdom territories or regions. And in which I want to talk about this uh, type of area because of the fact that the region of which the well waterbenders live in is mostly near water. Now we actually had to put into the fact on the materialization of their arms and armor. So what would they be? Well, that's the thing. Uh, for both the waterbenders and swamp benders, it's pretty much going to be mostly the same. Uh, mostly, I'm going to fit the, the, the type thing, because technically the swamp benders, they live in swampland, so there's not that much uh, type of materials they can use, except for wood, hides, and lacking in metal, unless they can find bog iron, and in which, uh, or otherwise, they just make their weapons out of bone, which in the... Also in the Southern and Northern Water Tribe, that's what they do. They use bone mostly, rather than making their weapons out of metal. Now in truth though, when it, came to, when it comes down to metal weaponry, that's a little bit different. However, uh, let me actually put, talk to y'all on the massive amounts of animals that are both in the North and South Pole. Apparently, there are a bunch of, there's something called an Arctic Hippo, apparently. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, living in the South or North Pole, which is kind of weird. Uh, then we have many types of seals. We have turtle seals, tiger seals, uh, pufflin seal, which I've never seen that actually in the whole series, actually, uh, and an arctic seal. Then we actually also have a koala otter that lives in the Northern Water Tribe, which apparently we do see, actually, uh, when it comes to them going to the Aang and Katara and uh, Sokka actually while arriving towards the Northern Water Tribe we actually see a <laughs> a koala otter which does not make any sense this looks so stupid uh, but yeah uh, and then we also have regular otters like a penguin otter or even a whale walrus maybe which that is kind of weird now then we also have the land animals such as Arctic camels, which I don't know how the hell there's an Arctic camel in the middle of the freaking Arctic, because it's the Arctic. It's You don't normally see camels in Arctic regions, you normally see them in deserts, which I found that one a little weird. Uh, but then we see a polar dog, we see a polar bear dog, we see a polar bear, and as well a polar leopard. And then there are the snow leopard caribou for some weird reason, which are only seen in the comics, which I think that's probably a good thing, because this, this is a little weird looking. Uh, and then wolves and yaks. Now, uh, now let's actually take all that material and place it in. Now, that would all those types of animals I just named, those would all become the types of armor known as hide armor. Now, if none of y'all know what hide armor is, it's another metaphor for leather armor. Leather armor is actually historically accurate, and as well, it's actually a real type of working armor. In fact, uh, there have been many, somewhat many discoveries in some regions. In fact, I'll leave a link down below in the uh, another Fantasy Friday video for leather armor, if it was real or not, which uh, you got to admit, I really do like the fact that they did uh, try their best with the uh, water tribes in this because they actually look as though they are not hardly, like literally, they're hardly wearing any metal armor, which would be historical to that form. They would mostly be wearing boiled leather, and of which, if none of y'all understand of how strong leather armor is, it is actually resistant enough to stop a cutting blow with certain weapons. However, if you get hit with a mace, there's probably no surviving that. Because a bludgeon weapon like a warhammer, a mace, or a... 
Well, you see my point. They would technically destroy the body. In which, the armor was perfect at stopping arrows and, as well, uh, bladed weapons. However, the blade could still pretty much uh, leave damage underneath. However, since they're wearing padding underneath this due to the hide and fur that they would wear, I would normally see them probably skinning the animal, then boiling the leather or uh, density as much as they could, and as well they probably would glue the fur on the inside, making it resistant enough to stop a sword blow or pretty much any type of bladed weapon. Now, I can actually say that someone working with the uh, people of the Northern and Southern Water Tribe. However, if we take a look at uh, the swamp benders, they pretty much probably does go with alligators or some weird damn lizard that they would eat. Uh, I don't know, there's a good example, but I can't actually put it in with these guys because these guys are so stupid. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, <clears throat> a joke aside, uh, in which I do see leather armor pretty much uh, being incredibly resistant enough to stop certain blows. In fact, their armor it actually does look like it could actually work. Now, also with the wolf-style helmet, this... It's something we actually start to see during the invasion of the Red Sun, or the Black Sun as it was called, I believe. And in which, the wolf-style helmet, it looks as though, like literally, I'm just taking a guess here, but my best bet is that they took wood or something and crafted it enough to actually create the design helmet. In fact, we actually see this in history with another type of warrior culture, or Neolithic warrior culture, known as the Aztec Jaguar. And of which, the Aztec Jaguars, and none of y'all understand, these guys would have had decorated ceremonial helmets when they chased it, or chased after people, there are different terms I want to call it, but you can see my point, they would just went after people as soon as they were running, and you see my point, and bring them back for sacrifice, which is kind of horrifying. <laughs> but yeah, in fact, they would have the spirit of the animal, in fact, it's actually stated that ancient Aztecs believed that the spirit of the animal will be trapped inside the said help. Uh, they do some sacrificial blessing of an animal or something like that, of a jaguar, and it's actually stated that blood would have been splattered on the helm to actually make it, uh, well, feel as though that it was spiritual. In fact, people would think, in fact, ancient Aztecs would actually believe that they are a jaguar now, which is kind of horrifying, to say the least, because... Uh, would you want to actually face off against a guy who pretty much believed that he was a jaguar and is about to bite you in the butt? I really wouldn't. Uh, but yeah. Now, that actually brings uh, to many forms. In fact, they could even create hide shields in... Uh, th in fact, we actually do see a hide-like shield in also in the invasion of Black Sun in Avatar. Which, if we see that, we actually see that it's actually of a hexagonal type shape, which is perfect. Because, if you think about it, it's nearly identical to that of uh, our ancient ancestral type of shield, a type of tower shield that would have been strapped on and used to defend oneself. However, since it's a hexagonal type shape, we can easily see them use a spear on the one end. In fact, imagine the hexagonal piece just being right here, and I can easily do my stabs and such. Now that's actually really cool. In fact, they can even do good cutting blows, they can defend and thrust, parries, and so on, which I like that. In fact, I do love the fact that they actually got the guy, uh, but they don't exactly explain the armor, but this is just my theory, they're trying to make it as leather armor, which, uh, it would be a lot more badass though if the fur was on the inside of the armor to add protection to the body, because that would actually make it a little more safe, if you ask me. Although, then we actually uh, have to understand they might have actually created different designs of armor to it. In fact, they might have created a layering system of armor. Now, I hear many of you already tell what do you mean by layering system? Uh, layering system in armor is actually very common in history books. For example, uh, let's take the Medieval Knight. The Medieval Knight has first a coat of gambeson, then mail, then he has plate. Now, this is by the four, late 14th century standards, but you get my point. And in which, uh, well, pretty much you see the point. And as well, sometimes he would have added a doublet over it to add cushioning effect to stop the weapon from damaging the plate as much. Which, that gives us a good point to it. Now, 
that actually does work a little bit actually in history because in truth, ancient people actually did use layering design systems of armor. In fact, the ancient Celts had a what they call a superb armor or known as light armor by the Romans, of which was supposed to be first padding, then a coat of riveted mail, then scales that were attached to the mail, and or sometimes just leather attached with scales over the over the mail, and then a boiled leather over that. And of which it was sleeveless and of which would provide great ample support for the human body, especially if it, they took a weapon to the gut and such. In which the Romans feared this armor so much they named it immortal armor or uh, demon armor since it was pretty much impossible to kill the warrior wearing this armor. In fact, that's got a good example to it, but that's my point. But in truth, uh, even our Neolithic ancestors might have actually done this. We don't know since there's uh, not that much evidence to prove, but in truth we have found ancient weapons and somewhat ancient armor, such as bone armor, none of which would have worked. So my best bet, they might have actually also uh, taken uh, shards of bones or pieces of bones out of which they couldn't make into weapons, and what they did is that they turned it into the exoskeleton of the le boiled leather. Then they wrapped each layering of boiled leather over, making it an impossible to thrust through armor, and especially if it comes through, uh, well, uh, metal sword. In fact, uh, I have to put this out here. Leather armor can stop metal weaponry. It just depends on the weapon that hits you. Because this is something I like to prove out there because uh, in which leather armor had to probably be leather uh, layered over to make the armor superb enough and hard and resistant enough to stop a cut. And as well, if you imagine it, this could probably work for the Water Tribe Warrior. Now, what about also uh, their weaponry, you might ask? Uh, this is actually a really good one I like to cover because of the fact uh, the weapons they would normally have would either be made out of metal or made out of bone. You know, I hear many of you all already, uh, Templar, why would bone work? Actually, bone weaponry has actually been used by our ancestors, especially in the Neolithic Age and including the pre-Neolithic Age and including also in the Bronze Age, especially the very early Bronze Age. And in fact, it was actually uh, incredible enough that we made spear tips, we've made arrows with them, we've pretty much done everything with bones and antlers for so long. In fact, a uh, survivalist today can easily make an arrowhead out of nothing more than uh, wood, a bones, and uh, or stone and such, and feathering for the for the fletchings. And in which that's a good form to it. Now, though. In the series, we see them using bone to make uh, clubs, which I do like that fact. In fact, this is an image of Sokka's uh, war club, which I do like. It's made out of bone, and apparently it was supposed to be made out of uh, polar bear, I believe? I'm not so certain, but yeah. Uh, in which, that's actually a really good design. In which, just imagine, in fact, this actually reminds me of Native American style type war clubs that were mostly made out of wood. However, uh, if none of you understand, uh, bone is lighter than wood and slightly stronger. Now, depending on the animal you kill, because uh, human bones, I wouldn't actually want to go that far insane. So, uh, yeah. But in truth, yes. Uh, if you actually make a war club like this, such as out of a themer and such, it would actually be incredibly dangerous. Now, though, there's also spears. Spears are incredibly dangerous, and as which we do see them making uh, spearheads, or any type of, uh, either made out of bone or metal. I don't know which, but I'm hoping that this is bone, because uh, that looks way too much metal for this type of weapon, because that will probably make it slightly heavier towards the end. So, I'm hoping it's bone. Now, in truth, actually, you can make a bone blade, literally. Some actually have actually tried doing this with uh, modern uh, animals, such as, say, like, uh, like, say we get, like, say, a big beef, say, for example, like a, like a cow or something like that. We take it from a themer and we sharpen it down. We can actually make a blade out of it. Now, I've only seen a couple of YouTube videos on that. I'll try and see if I can put them down in the links in the description area. Uh, but yeah, 
But in true factually, I would normally see this being used as a war club, not as a uh, type of weapon. However, if they could catch it from, say, uh, animals, say, like, uh, under the water, such as a whale, a shark, or whatever, they could pretty much probably make a good type of spear out of the said teeth of a shark. In fact, uh, in ancient island cultures, such as the Philippines, the uh, Maui warriors, the Hawaiians, and so on, there are dozens of uh, Filipino people, uh, or uh, Pacific people, um, there's not a good way I could put out this, uh, let's just say uh, islanders, or whatever, for this type of form. In which, uh, since they're seagoing people, they can easily use this type of, well, method to hunt. In fact, uh, this is a Maui-style uh, shark tooth club, which is devastating enough to rip flesh with a cut. I, I, yeah, yeah, which I really am still terrified of these things. I don't know why I am horrified from uh, ancient cultural weapons like this, but it's kind of horrifying, yeah. Now, though, I could pretty much also see some other weapons, such as a stingray spear, which are actually dangerous. In fact, if you actually stab at somebody with a stingray spear, what can happen is those barbs in, from a stingray are so dangerous enough that you can accidentally uh, cut through your aorta, for your, which if no, you don't know what your aorta is, or anything like that. That's the major uh, areas of the veins, that of which, if you get those cut, you're going to bleed out immediately. You're just going to die, especially. And if you're trying to pull them out, it's like, you're just dying and you're moving a lot, and guess what? Here's the thing. Like, say, for example, I get stabbed in the arm with a stingray spear. Guess what? I managed to break off the stingray spear, but here's the thing. I broke off the stingray spear. Now those barbs are stuck inside my arm. And why is that bad? Here's the thing. Oh, let me turn my arm. Ah! I cut my arm! Literally, I've probably just taken out uh, probably five amounts of my blood, uh, and probably my arm will probably go dead because the nerve system will just die. That's horrifying. So, let's put that in the frame. Uh, and as well, this is actually really horrifying to the fact, but as well, I also told that there was a, a scimitar in the game, in the entire series. Huh? Whale tooth scimitar. Horrifying enough? No? You think it there you can't get any worse? Here's the thing. That's as worse there's worse things than this, trust me. Uh, but in truth, I can see this somewhat working. In fact, we actually see a lot of bone weapons, especially uh when Sokka, Katara, and Aang actually stumble upon a water tribe battle somewhere in the Earth Kingdom. And I think it was Vatu, I think. Batu, 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 I think. I can't remember his name. Sorry, guys, if any of you all are major uh, Avatar fans. I'm sorry. I've let you down. I know. But yeah, uh, anyways, this, these weapons we can all see scattered around. And in which, that's a good form. We actually got good weapons in the entire uh, type series, which are made out of bone. And I can see these things working. In fact... However, they do say that there are bone axes. Now, I'm here many of you already. Oh, that can't work. Actually, it can. Take a look at this image. These are actually some bone axes with some metal style weapons. And in truth, bone is incredibly dangerous enough that you can actually hack at someone's uh, body so much that you can actually kill. In fact, this almost reminds me of a tomahawk, actually. Oh, better not uh, remind my Native American brother. And oh, God, that'd be horrifying. But yeah, but now many of you might wonder, okay Templar, what about the metal weapons? Let's see the metal. Well, uh, metal weaponry not existent. Hardly existent, I should say. Now, I could see them probably making a, you know, if none of you understand, uh, the North and South Pole, and including to the fact of the Swamplands, hardly have that much metal. Now, in the Swamplands, they can make uh, bog iron, which is... Uh, let's just say not the best metal you want, but actually is per better than nothing. In fact, it's actually been proven that bog iron is still being used to make many uh, weapons and such, or machetes, for example, 
in many countries. In fact, even in the United States, we use low-grade style machetes sometimes. However, those low-grade machetes are actually strong enough, especially if you have a reinforcement bar at the back. Now, if you don't know what I mean by a reinforcement bar, it means that the blade has to look like, well, like an upside-down pyramid. In other words, the blade forward and more of a heft in the back. In which we see that with Sokka's machete, which I do like that actually, because this actually has a really cool design to it. However, with that design at beak, uh, I don't know how they managed to do that with, with iron due to the fact it's iron, it's not uh, bronze. So I'm still wondering how the hell they did that, but still. Uh, it can somewhat work actually. In which, actually, um, this actually is a really good idea, because this actually does remind me of an orc, uh, an orcish style weapon known as the orc machete. So that actually is a good design out of it. Now, I don't know if, uh, Sokka's, uh, machete was made out of metal or not. Uh, I'm just putting out there what I'm told. In fact, I was told it was metal, not bone. But, uh, we, uh, it's hard to say. But now, we can also see, actually, even arrows being made out of bone, and as well, even uh, metal. However, I would actually see uh, the arrows probably being made more out of bone rather than air into arrows, because if you think about it, metal is very uh, not common in the North and South Pole. I mean, it is. problem is, it's uh, not easy to get your hands on. In fact, take a look at our Earth, for example, and we technically take know that the North and South Pole well, we know that the South Pole, or Antarctica, is pretty much an ancient archipelago or massive continent. And unfortunately, it's been sunk or stuck underneath so much ice, it's stuck like that. So, yeah. Now, though, that actually gives us a good example, though. But if the water technically uh, goes away, we then have a new continent. Yeah. And then we get mass precious resources and all that and such and such. But, uh, I do not actually see pretty much, uh, much coming out of this. But most of the time, yes, I could see the machete being made out of metal, since, uh, if you're wealthy enough to make one. However, I could also see the weapons such as a knife being made, which is known as a tooth-bladed knife, which apparently, uh, teeth are supposed to be glued upon this knife somehow. I don't know how that's even possible, so I'm not even going to try it asking. But, actually, we also see something I know everyone's gonna go crazy on the comment area for, saying I should have probably done this one first. Uh, Sokka's boomerang. Yes, I do see this working, actually. I do see a metal boomerang probably working, but I also see it probably not being the best idea in the rule book of best ideas. One major reason behind it is, well, none of y'all actually know of what this is, it's made out of metal, and look at this design. It actually would work. Problem is, uh, we have a bunch of these holes which do cause it to be lighter and actually cause it probably to fly further and such. But the problem is, uh, I would have a horrifying part is actually coming back. Now, we actually see in the series Sokka managing to catch the boomerang every time. Uh, which, he probably had a lot of training for that, probably with a wooden one, but as soon as he probably got to a metal one, I would still be horrified. What, now I hear many of you already. Simple why would be horrified by this? Here's the thing, uh, his boomerang is sharpened. Literally, yeah, none of y'all actually remember this, uh, especially with the invasion of the Northern Water Tribe, for example. We hear the fact that he's, he says to, uh, the, uh, chieftain of the Northern Water Tribe, he says, Nothing, I'm just sharpening my boomerang. <laughs> Which I do find that scene a little funny, actually. But, uh, that got my attention, actually. Uh, just imagine, though, because in truth, that would actually kill somebody if it impacted. And probably would, in the process, kill him. Especially Combustion Man here. Uh, which I'm kind of surprised this didn't kill him. Because the blade would have probably twirled into his head. And since it's made out of metal, we have to put that factorization of the weight play and as well the speed it's coming at him. In fact, even wooden boomerangs uh, that are made in Australia, which a lot of my Australian viewers are pretty much going nuts right now because they probably are going to start making a metal boomerang. Oh god, I probably just fucked up Australia already. 
<laughs> Australian government, I am sorry if this is if this causes massive chaos. Uh, but yeah, uh, anyways. Oh god. A metal boomerang. If this thing hits something, it's just gonna kill him. And in fact, wooden boomerangs that are made in Australia are incredibly dangerous. In fact, they were made for hunting. And I'm here many already. Oh, girly Templar, what were they meant to hunt after? Pfft, seriously? It's a freaking aerial weapon. What else do you think it's gonna hit? It's gonna hit a bird, dang. It's, it, if, it, as soon as it hits a bird, you know it's gonna get kill it. Because one whack with a boomerang, and it's dead. But however, sometimes I hear that boomerangs were also used to be used as a weapon, uh, as warfare even, which that's a little more horrifying because I do not want to actually get whacked at with a boomerang. <laughs> oh man, that'd actually be weird on the tombstone. Oh, how'd he die? Oh, he got killed by a fucking boomerang. Because that would probably be the weirdest way to die. I would have to probably say, well, actually there are weirder ways I'd probably see someone dying, but still. Uh, as the weird weapons go, that might actually take the cake. Uh, but yes, actually, weapons, uh, boomer boomerangs were used as weapons. And in fact, if it's made out of metal, it's twice as much more deadly than it is made out of wood. So just imagine if that thing actually hurled at somebody, it's going to impale them through the skull. However, Zuko managed to survive during the first season because he was wearing a helmet. So, if he wasn't wearing that helmet, he'd probably be dead by now. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Uh, in truth, a metal boomerang, I could see dangerous. Now, I could probably also see the fact that Sokka might have accidentally cut off one or two of his fingers in the process of catching the boomerang wrong. Uh, but, yeah. But as well, with those uh, air holes, he could probably also use them as a knuckle duster. Especially if he grabs it like so. And one blade is pointing upwards, and in such, the blade like this, he can easily do a, like a cut stab and such, and the rest of the blade is right down here. However, you can also probably just do it this way, just to, but I prefer more like such. But you can see my point. This thing is really awesome, and it might actually work. So, yeah, and which, that's what I have to say. Now, I heard many already, Templar, what would you change? I don't think I would change anything. They did phenomenally well. However, I do state that the fact they might need to put the fur on the inside to add cushioning, so that's probably about it. Uh, but yeah, I could still see this thing working. Now, for the swamp enders on the other hand, I do not see them mostly using any uh, metal projectile weapons, especially in a swamp, due to the fact they're gonna probably lose it, and due to the fact they're kind of a little stupid. So... Yeah, let's actually put that play into motion, and really think that one through. Uh, but yeah, if y'all actually have any ideas for me to cover in Fantasy Friday, let me know down in the comments below. I'll be happy, I'll be actually more than happy to talk about them. If y'all want me to do the Fire Nation next, the uh, Metal Clan next, or as they say, Metal Benders, whichever way you want to put it, or pretty much anything else, let me know down in the comments below, and I will be happy to do it. In fact, I still am thinking maybe I should do the Kyoshi Warriors next, but I'm also thinking of other fantasy-style creatures, such as the Minotaur, or the Satyrs, or something else, or maybe even the Mermaids. I'm still thinking on it. But, anyways guys, hopefully you like this, like and subscribe, also click the bell icon to actually be notified when a new video comes up. Also, so that way you can also join the order, please do hit the subscribe button and join the order to become a Celtic Templar. Anyways, guys, also check out more of our uh, awesome stuff on Facebook, which we actually cover some funny stuff, but actually also some really cool history involved. And uh, pretty much I do want to actually talk to you all more about other things. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.